Hello, my name is Simon Ice, and welcome to another Burning Crusade guide video. Today, I've got a gold farm tier list for Burning Crusade. We're going to talk about a lot of different ways you can earn gold in Burning Crusade and rank them according to how lucrative they are. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Now, let's get to it. World of Warcraft's in-game economy is an entire game in itself. It is an almost entirely unregulated mess of supply and demand for goods and services. If you're a little bit clever and pick the right thing to do, you can make a lot of in-game gold. This video will go over different ways in which you can earn gold and rate them based on how lucrative they are. The exact gold per hour will vary server to server and over time. Throughout the video, remember the rule of supply and demand. When demand is higher than supply, price will go up. When supply is higher than demand, price will go down. Supply and demand are variables that can and will change over time. The savvy gold maker will adapt to or even plan for change. Without further ado, let's talk about some ways to make gold. First up, we've got what I call basic resource farming, and I rate this as a C tier gold farm. It's very simple. Kill some easy to kill mobs, loot their items, and sell them. Mostly we're talking about primal elemental items like primal fire, primal air, or primal water, along with some Aldor or Scryer reputation turn-in items. You'll often have competition for mob spawns, which can reduce the efficiency of this farm. Next up, we have Profession Resource Farming, another C-tier gold farm. Similar to basic resource farming, but slightly more exclusive due to the profession requirements to gather these items. We're talking about skinning for leather, herbalism for herbs, mining for metals, or engineering for gas clouds, which gives you elemental items. Because this is slightly more restrictive on who can do it, you may have slightly higher gold per hour than basic resource farming, but it's still something that pretty much anyone can do. The last of the C tier gold farms are daily quests. Some parts of the game have quests that can be repeated once per day. These often offer gold and reputation rewards. If you can manage to complete them quickly and efficiently, this can provide a nice bit of gold on a daily basis. Next, we have Instance Farms, the first of the B-tier gold farms. These are farms that require a little bit of player skill, knowledge, or gear to accomplish. These aren't the low-hanging fruit of open-world basic farms. Stealth Farming Slave Pens or Mana Tombs for pickpocketing, chests, mining nodes, or herbalism nodes as a rogue or druid are some examples. AoE farming dungeons as a mage or paladin, even old world dungeons for vendorable items, is another example of instance farms. Generally, these will be decent money, but it depends on the demand for the resources you can gather in these instances. A big advantage of instance farming like this is that there is no competition. You can always zone into an instance, it doesn't matter who else is trying to do that farm at that time. Next up, we have Dungeon Carries, another B-tier gold farm. Just like Hunters sold clear Dire Maul Tribute instances, there are some good dungeons you can carry people through in Burning Crusade. Druids with Epic Flight form can sell runs in Sethic Halls and summon the Quest Boss, which can drop Reigns of the Raven Lord, a cool and exclusive mount. Karazhan Attunement requires many dungeons, but a clear dungeon will suffice for many stages of the quest. Early on, players can sell these cleared dungeons to people looking to complete their Karazhan attunements quickly. Last up, in the B tier, we have Transmutes. Alchemists and Tailors have multi-day cooldown abilities to transmute certain items into others that can only be obtained via this transmuting process. The resulting items are used in many different crafting recipes. Early on, Primal Might, Spellcloth, Primal Mooncloth, and Shadowcloth will be in high demand for the powerful items that players can craft with them. Later on in the game, when demand for these is lower, this will be much less lucrative. Leveling a character and profession specifically and only for doing transmutes is a lot of time investment for little output. Try to find something else you can do with the character as well. Next up, we have Profession Flips, the first of the A-tier gold farms. This is where we start getting into making some serious money. This is where you buy materials that you can use a profession to turn into something else and sell the item you make. 
you'll have to check the price of materials and the price of the product to find items where there is a good profit margin. This is a bit of an investment. If you buy a lot with a small profit margin, the price could go down before you sell all of your items and you might lose gold. Buying smaller volumes or only buying when the margin is large helps reduce risk of loss. An add-on that is particularly useful for this is called Trade Skill Master. It has many features to help track prices of materials and crafted goods to find opportunities for profit. Next up, we have investments, another A-tier gold making strategy. In theory, investments are simple. Find items that are cheap now and you expect to go up in price later. Buy for low price now, sell for high price later, and you make a profit. Being able to pick the right items and the right time to buy or sell is tricky. Investments are inherently risky. If the price doesn't go up, you can lose a lot of gold. But if it goes up and you're holding a lot of volume of the item, you can make loads of gold. Here are some factors to consider when evaluating investment items. Will demand remain steady or increase? Will supply remain steady or decrease? Either of these would be good things. When demand increases or supply decreases, price will go up. Finally, how difficult is this item to directly farm? If a price on the item goes up and it's very easy to gather, many players will simply go out, gather it, and flood the market with it, bringing the price back down, which makes it harder to earn a profit on those type of items. Here are some potential types of items that may be worth investing in. Herbs used for raiding consumables are almost always in demand, so if supply goes down, price will go up. Vanilla items that will be used in Burning Crusade. I imagine the supply of these will be lower during Burning Crusade, which would cause the price to increase compared to now. Finally, materials used in unreleased crafting patterns. With phased content releases in Burning Crusade, you can plan ahead to see what crafting items will become available and what materials those require. If you can buy the materials beforehand, you may be able to make a profit selling them after the pattern becomes released. A website that is very helpful for making wise investments is called nexushub.com. This gives you price and quantity information for any item you can search. On screen now, we have the price and quantity history for Dark Runes on Pagel Alliance Side Faction. The first S-tier gold farm we have is GDKP Rating. GDKP or Gold Bid Raids are groups where every item drop is auctioned off to the highest gold bidder. At the end, the money from the winning bids is pooled together and divided amongst the players in the raid. GDKP Raids are very popular and very lucrative in Classic. With highly desirable chase items like Fiery Warhorse's Reigns, Ashes of Alar, and Warglaive of Azanoth in Burning Crusade, I expect GDKP raids to remain popular and remain lucrative. Finally, we have Skilled Services as another S-tier gold farm. Skilled Services is a very lucrative but also very exclusive category. Just like in Classic, players sold level boosting services and summons to each other, players will pay in-game currency for shortcuts in Burning Crusade. Skilled PvP arena players may be able to take on another player and carry them through low-ranked games to boost their rating. With rating requirements on weapons starting in Season 3, this could be a very good way for skilled PvPers to make gold. Skilled PvE players may be able to carry another player through a fast clear of Zolaman for the exclusive Amani Warbear mount. If Blizzard doesn't nerf level boosting, Mages and Paladins will be able to clear out entire instances via AoE damage and boost the level of other characters very efficiently. Here we have the full tier list on the screen now. All the different ways I talked about to earn gold in the Burning Crusade ranked according to how lucrative I think they are. At the lowest tier, we have daily quests and basic resource gathering. These are simple, anyone can do them. Next up, we have instance farms, dungeon carries, and transmutes. These require a little bit more effort or skill, so they're probably a little bit more lucrative. On the A tier, we have profession flips and investment. There's potential for really high gain doing these, but there's also risk of loss with these gold making strategies. At the S tier, the absolute best ways I think you can make gold in the Burning Crusade 
We have attending gold DKP raids and providing skilled services to other players. If you really want to make a lot of money, these are the things you want to look to be doing in the Burning Crusade. Remember, there are a lot of ways to make gold in World of Warcraft. If you are smarter and faster than most other folks, you can make a lot of gold for a little effort. If you prefer the mindless and relaxing grinds for getting gold, that's okay too. This is a game, you should enjoy it. I provided these options to get your creative mind thinking about a bunch of different ways you can earn gold in the Burning Crusade. If there's something you think I left out in this video, feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching The Simonized Show. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Can't wait for more sweet videos? Links are on screen that you can watch right now. Be sure to join the Discord server and pop by on Twitch to catch me live. Links to both are in the video description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.